Hello everyone. In this video, we will look at a different way of implementing normalizing flows compared to what we have seen in the previous videos. Instead of using CDFs, we will be using affine transforms to implement normalizing flows. But before we get to it, let's review what we have done so far. We saw that if a function maps x to z, then the probability density of x is equal to the probability density of z times the amount by which the space around x is stretched or shrunk, which can be written in mathematical form as p of x equals p of z times the absolute value of the determinant of the Jacobian of the function f that maps x to z. We also saw that if we made one of the terms which was not on the main diagonal to be equal to zero, then it would make it very easy to evaluate the determinant of this Jacobian. It would simply be equal to the product of the values along the main diagonal. And this could be done by making sure that the autoregressive property was fulfilled. So for the case of images, this vector would be the pixels from an image. And for any pixel i, the CDF for the corresponding transform would be a function of pixels from 1 to i, which would give the transform to map xi to zi. But the issue with this function is that it's not easy to invert. To deal with this problem, a new kind of transform is introduced. It's an affine transform. Overall, the idea is the same. You still want to maintain the autoregressive property. And the mapping from x to z is given by scale times xi plus shift. And as you can see, it's very easy to go back to xi from zi. Now, let's take a look at how we can implement real and vp for 2D data. Let's say our data is given by xt, yt at any given time step t. Then what we do is, for one time step, we do not change xt, it remains unchanged. And then we use xt to calculate beta and gamma, which are used to shift and scale yt to give yt plus one. In the next step, yt plus one remains unchanged. So yt plus two is equal to yt plus one. And then yt plus one gives parameters beta two and gamma two, which are used to shift and scale xt plus 1 which results in xt plus 2 and then in the third step we keep xt plus 2 to be constant and then xt plus 2 gives us beta 3 and gamma 3 which is used by yt plus 2 to give yt plus 3. So as you can see the determinants of these Jacobians are equal to the product of values along the main diagonal so in this case they are equal to gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3 and so on. The sum of log of determinants of the Jacobians is going to be equal to the sum of gammas. Let's take a look at how it works when we want to invert the function. So we start with x of t plus 3. We keep it unchanged, which gives us x of t plus 2 to be the same as x of t plus 3. And x of t plus 3 gives us beta 3 and gamma 3, which is used by y t plus 3 to give us y t plus 2. And then in the next step, we keep y t plus 2 to be constant. And y t plus 2 also gives us beta 2 and gamma 2, which is used by x of t plus 2 to give us x of t plus 1, and so on. And you can verify that this is exactly the inverted process of uh, calculating x of t plus 3 and y of t plus 3 from x t and y t. So this gives us a very easy way to do forward as well as reverse operations which are invertible and very easy to calculate. So how do we get these parameters beta and gamma from x t or y t? It could be any arbitrarily complex function which in this case turns out to be a neural network. We will be using a small neural network which will take as input x and output beta and gamma. In this case, this function is uh, this self dot layers which is defined here. It takes xt0 as input and it outputs beta and log of gamma and then yt plus 1 is equal to beta t plus e to the power of log of gamma t which is the same as gamma t times yt. Notice that 
x t comma zero can be written down as an element wise product of the input vector x t y t times one zero, which we will call a mask. And for calculating the output, we can rewrite this expression as beta t plus gamma t times the input vector times one minus mask. And this is how we will implement these operations. This operation can be implemented in a class named affine transform 2D where we define the mask, we define this MLP and we define some parameters to learn the scale and shift for the scale, the gamma parameter effectively. And in the forward pass, we first multiply the input vector with the mask which is then passed to the MLP from which the log scale and shift are calculated and then we just do some simple operations to get the output. If we want to continue the sequence of operations, what we would like to have is a list of affine transforms where each affine transform is applied one after another. So what we have here is a class called real NVP which contains an attribute called transforms which is nothing but a module list, just a list of affine transforms. And what we do is we go through each affine transform, transform our variable from x to z and then keep on adding the log determinant of Jacobian. And this gives us the final output z along with the final log value of uh, the amount by which the variable was changed. Now let's take a look at how to implement real NVP for many dimensions. Let's say we have a vector with n dimensions. What we can do is we can only use the odd values to get the parameters for affine transformations of values at even indices. For example, in this case, the values x1, x3, x5 and so on will remain unchanged from time step t to t plus 1 and these values will be passed through some MLP to give us beta 2, gamma 2, beta 3, gamma 3 and so on which will be used by x2, x4, x6 and so on to be scaled and shifted to give us x2 at t plus 1, x4 at t plus 1 and so on. And then at the next time step, we keep x2, x4, x6 and so on, the values at even indices to be constant. And then we transform the values at odd indices in the same manner. This makes sure that we are not getting any value which does not change through this sequence of operations. Let's take a look at what the Jacobian of such a transformation looks like. So in this case, uh, we are keeping the values at x1 and x3 to be constant and x2 and x4 are transformed. And you can verify that the determinant of this Jacobian is simply the product of values along the main diagonal, which in this case is equal to gamma 2 times gamma 4. Another thing we can do is we can keep the first half of the values in the vector to be constant and shift and scale the second half of the values using the parameters which are calculated only using the first half of the vectors. And in the next time step, we can do the opposite. We can keep the second half of the values in the vector to be constant and shift and scale the values in the first half of the vector. This is an example of what that operation looks like. In this case, we keep x1 and x2 to be constant and x3 and x4 are affine transformed. And in this case as well, you can verify that the determinant of the Jacobian is simply the product of values along the main diagonal. So what we do in the case of images is something very similar. We take the pixels of an image and we use two kinds of affine transform patterns. One is where the values in white remain the same from time step t to t plus 1 and the values in black are transformed and from time step t plus 1 to time step t plus 2 the values in white are transformed whereas the values in black remain the same. We also have a different kind of transform called uh, channel wise transform where we first transform the shape of the input tensor and then do the same thing but for channels. So in this case uh, the first two channels remain the same and the last two channels are shifted and scaled from time step t to t plus 1 and from t plus 1 to t plus 2 the first two channels are shifted and scaled but the last two channels remain the same. And we combine all these different ways of uh, affine transformations to be able to learn some functions which may not be as easy to learn if we were using only one kind of transform. So let's see how the implementation for this looks like.
In this case, we will be using the celeb dataset. It is a dataset of faces of uh, some celebrities, I suppose. This is again a very standard PyTorch dataset pipeline, so I will not go into this. The pickle file is available in the repo and also in the link below in the description. Let's focus on the model. What we want is, for a given image, we want to be able to calculate the affine parameters beta and gamma for each pixel and then multiply it with the mask which will remove these parameters for the values which we want to keep con to keep constant and it will only keep the values for pixels which are going to be shifted and scaled. So first let's take a look at how do we implement the checkerboard transform. For implementing this transform the only critical part is defining a mask. So we define a mask with values alternating between 0 and 1 and we also have a parameter called top left equals 0 which defines whether we should start the sequence of 1s and zeros with a 1 or a 0. And once we have that mask then we can simply multiply the mask with the input and then pass that mask input to a neural network which gives us the values for shift and scale which are then used for shifting and scaling the input. Now let's take a look at how channel-wise transform is implemented. In this case, if we are using images, then we might need to transform the tensor into a different shape, but that's not implemented in this class. It is implemented before this class is called. And what we do here is we divide the input tensor along the channels to give us two tensors called fixed and non-fixed and we only take the one which is non-fixed and do an affine transformation of it based on the variables which were calculated using fixed and then again uh, most of it is basically tensor manipulation but the basic idea of shifting and scaling transforms is the same here once we have implemented these affine transforms what we can do is we can create a class which contains a list of these transforms and which can implement these transforms one by one to learn some complicated functions. So we define a class called real NVP, which contains a list of checkered transforms, a list of channel wise transforms, and another list of checkered transforms. And this also contains some functions to modify the shape of the tensor to make it work for channel wise transforms. So we have some function functions squeeze and unsqueeze to do so. And then in the forward method, we simply iterate through each of these functions and calculate the output and the log determinant of Jacobian. Add them up and return the values. For the full implementation, we also have to implement the neural network that's used to give these affine parameters and also a modified form of uh, normalization which is used but that's not central to the idea of normalizing flows and I will not go through the implementations here. But you can take a look at them in the repo and go through the code. This is what the loss function looks like. It is the same loss function that we have been using for all of our previous projects. The code for training and evaluating the model is pretty boilerplate. So let's not go through it right now, but let's take a look at what the results look like. So this is uh, the Python notebook where we train the model and then take a look at some of the results and uh, this is what the model learns after a few epochs of training. So as you can see here it has learned to create faces although they don't look as realistic but this shows that the model has capability to learn complicated distributions. That's all for this video I hope you enjoyed this series. Do check out the code in the description and please let me know if you have any comments. Thank you.